Hi, boys and girls. Today we're reading about the curious little monkey. The title is called Curious George Goes to the Zoo. Let's get started. This is George. George is a good little monkey and always very curious. Today, George was feeling very excited. The man with the yellow hat was taking him to the zoo. As they drove, the man explained to George that this wasn't just any zoo that they were going to visit. It's called the Wild Animal Park, the man said. All the, the animals roam around freely. When they arrived, George saw a huge banner. George looked up at it, but he could not read the words. A friendly zookeeper explained, It's an extra special day here at the Wild Animal Park, she said. It is our baby rhino's first birthday. We are going to have a party for her later on. A party? This was going to be a wonderful trip to the zoo. George tried to walk into the park where the animals were, but the zookeeper stopped him. You can't walk in there, she said. To explore the zoo, you have to ride in one of our special cars. She pointed at a huge car that had no roof on it. Oh my, what fun this was going to be. George and his friend climbed aboard and the car drove into the park. Soon, they were in the midst of the wild animal park. Look over there, said the zookeeper. Here is our pride of lions. We have a large family here. George pointed in the other direction. Yes, George, said the zookeeper. I see the giraffes too. Their tall necks help them eat leaves from the treetops. And there are two ostriches running this way. George was happy to be seeing so many amazing animals. The zoo car drove past a small pond. Flamingo, pink flamingos waited in the water. Their heads bobbed up and down as they walked on spindling legs. The flamingos turned pink because they eat so many tiny pink shrimp. The zookeeper said, but George was not listening. He had never seen flamingos before. He was curious about how those flamingos were moving. He leaned out of the back of the zoo car as far as he could to take a look. But then, oh, what happened? First, George lost his balance. Then he fell. Kerplunk! right out of the zoo car. His friend hadn't noticed that he had fallen. George ran as quickly as a little monkey could toward the pond. The flamingos bobbed their heads and lifted their feet one at a time. It looked like they were dancing. George danced with them. Suddenly the water in the pond started to move. Then a hippo popped its head out from under the water. It was a surprise. George stopped dancing to take a look. The hippo opened its huge mouth as if it was yawning. George opened his mouth wide too. It was fun to act like a hippo. Just then, George noticed that something was rustling in the reeds near the pond. George was curious. He wanted to see what was there. It, in an instant, he jumped over to the reeds. He poked in his nose inside and saw a baby rhino. The tiny rhino was cute, but she looked a little sad and a little bit lonely. George wanted to make that baby rhino feel happy again. He thought and thought, maybe the baby rhino would like a flamingo dance. He jumped and bobbed his head and danced his feet up and down. The baby rhino peeked her head out of the weeds so she could watch him. George danced more. 
and the rhino walked out of the reeds, she was curious too. They were having so much fun that George didn't notice what was behind him. The zookeeper stomped over to George. She did not look happy. The man with the yellow hat was running behind her. You are a naughty little monkey, said the zookeeper. You were supposed to stay in the car. You and your friend will have to go now. George walked to the man's side. He waved goodbye to the baby rhino. The man and the zookeeper turned to see whom George was waving to. The baby rhino! Why, we've been looking for you all day, said the zookeeper. She got separated from her mother. George was glad to see the zookeeper looking happy again. He and the man started walking towards the exit. The zookeeper ran to stop him. Thank you for finding our baby rhino, George, and just in time for her birthday party. Will you join us for some cake? George jumped with glee. He had forgotten all about the party, and he did love cake. The man and George followed the zookeeper and the baby rhino back to zoo headquarters. The rhino's mother was waiting for her. The zookeeper brought out a special birthday cake that was shaped like a rhino. George had never seen a cake like that before. You can have the first piece, George, said the zookeeper. I also have a special treat for you. She placed a bunch of bananas in front of him. George was very happy to have tasty bananas, but he saved room for some cake too. That's the end of our stories, boys and girls, about Curious George visiting the zoo. To the right hand side of the page, it says, are you curious about animals? Let's read a few. Hippopotamus can live in the water or on land. On a hot, sunny day, though, they prefer to use water or mud to cool themselves off. Flamingos often stand on just one foot for long periods of time, though no one quite knows why they do it. And giraffes are the tallest of all land animals. Their long legs and necks help them grab and eat leaves from other high in the trees and then lions live in large families called prides they are the fierce predators with canine teeth more than three inches long ostriches are the largest of all bird species though they can't fly they are very fast runners hitting speeds to up to 45 miles per hour and then Rhinoceros have a horn on their nose that look very powerful. The horns are made of material similar to our fingernails. Like fingernails, they can grow back if cut off. So that's the end of our story officially. We learned some new things about animals we may not have known. So I hope you guys have a very awesome rest of your day. And try not to get into any trouble like Curious George. See you guys soon. Bye.